it a lot in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, I rely on many people. You speak English speech. perfectly. Oh, no, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I wish I spoke Italian that way. <laughs> my grandmother was English. And so my family had to put them in Italy. I had also relatives that come from Ireland. Oh, well, wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Have you been to Ireland? Yeah, I love it. Great. Yeah, it's a magical island. Yeah. yeah. I love the people there. Absolutely, the sound, the music. Yeah. And I, and I know that like the pubs are all changing. Um, big, big beer places are buying them up. Big beer companies. Yeah. And they're putting carpet on the floor and they're trying to change it, you know. But I think, you know, sometimes people just have to, you know, go through changes to see where they want to be, you know. But they still have seen the same characters behind the bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wish it was, I, when I go to London, there's a, a pub near our hotel that's very real. Uh, it's a man who was a great friend of Francis Bacon. And so when he passed away, uh, he left the, the bar to, he, he left the bar because he owned it to this gentleman who runs it. And he is not doing any changes at all in that place. You know? I imagine it. And it's fun. It's true. Really yeah, exactly. The English style. <laughs> And what do you think about uh, the power of one photography? In photography, only one photography can change an imaginary. Um, maybe say that to me again, I'm sorry. What about the power of one photography? Uh, I mean, sometimes it's a photography or a photograph that you don't know that person. Sometimes I'll get a picture I've taken by my, my, my nephew's kids, uh, and it's so incredible. I, I go, where, where were you when you took this picture? So, you know, where you were standing and sitting and laying down, or half in the ground, photographing. And, um, you know, I, I think there's, you know, the power of photography, I think, is to learn something about yourself and then other people and other things and maybe how you can make a change in your own life and in other people's lives. Yeah. Uh, I was working in Miami during the, uh, when the hurricane hit um, okay. in Haiti. Sorry about Not the recent one, but the one before. Ah, before. So terrible. And a lot of people were in the hospitals in Miami. Um, Haitian people uh, because they were cooking when they were cooking and they had hot oil and things like that that they used for cooking. They, they, they fell off the stove and burned a lot of people. So there was a lot of burn victims. And um, but I went to the hospital and, you know, walked around and met some of the people there. I went to the Haitian church, which is a really amazing church. And the whole church applauded the fact that we were there to show people how, you know, how important they are, you know. And uh, I don't know, I just learned a lot from that time. You know, it was really great. You know, I really, uh, you know, I had a big exhibition in Miami at the, uh, uh, <coughs> this, uh, was it the, uh, the Temporary art pieces, sorry. The Paris, Paris Museum? No, no, in, in, in Miami. Ah, in Miami, in yeah. the design. Yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, and it was huge. And, and all the Haitian people and all the uh, African American community came to see the show. Fantastic. Because they had never seen that kind of show before. And I was happy because the Miami Herald. I had made a book with about 100 pages, mostly photographs, and some writing, showing the journey of the Haitian people in Miami, which was quite a difficult one. And what about an hour exhibition? I would like to rely on a Europe solo show in Rome. <laughs> I'm a creator, and so I'm thinking about it. <laughs> uh, 
will be magical for me. <laughs> I can't start to work about it. <laughs> the projection, usually when you start to realize that it's also, uh, there is a one year of work only to, to found the, the best museum, the place where all can happen. Well, you know, one of the things that attracted me to all of, all of it, to make this film was what I first started to work with. And Italy was one of the few places that gave me a chance. Yeah, I experience. think the magic um, Milan. With my friend Franco Sizzani, which is an Italian girl. Exactly. She had a magazine called Fermi, and then there was a magazine called May. And, um, and I used to meet <coughs> a lot of other young photographers who worked there. And they guided us through things that really were supportive. And, uh, but strangely enough, most of the time, uh, the magazines were not so open to their own in terms of hiring the time of photographers. So I, I had such a love of the photographs that I'd seen. And uh, I was here on a trip for another magazine, uh, uh, and uh, with Isabella Rossellini, and she just started. She hadn't modeled. She, was doing some journalistic things, and, uh, and we did a little tour around Italy with her, took pictures, and um, and you know, and I really felt that maybe that was a job that the Italian photographer should have. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know? absolutely. And so I said to the people who were working for why, you know, why did you hire me? I mean, Isabella is my friend. But I love her and I love photographing her. But this is a perfect thing for the Italian photographer. Um, it was strange, you know, I mean, I think that, um, you know, strangely, like Giorgio Amaro, he, you know, always hired Italian photographers at first. Yeah, exactly. For many years. And I always loved those pictures, like the Alto Fly Dinos. Was just these guys. And when we look at those pictures and we involved with those men, we all wanted to look like them. Yeah. And and the pictures were from here to here. And uh, from right below the neck to the top of the head. Sometimes even closer. And um, I can't tell you how many fans he got to find some of those pictures. I wear those clothes while I have that face. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, it, it's nice that, um, that all the different kinds of photography play a big part. And I, I think that, I don't know, I, you know, it, there's, a, there's a truth about photography. There's a truth mm -hmm. in photography that I think is. In the order of the most said it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what else can I say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there are many different kinds of situations and possibilities. And I think that we are living in an hybrid period. So everything is possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go. When I first started, I got my first camera from my mom, my mom and dad. And I used to dress my mom up and I'd dress my sister. And I'm out in my backyard, in the beer farm. And I'd do all these pictures. Kind of my version of a fashion picture, which wasn't so fashion, you know. But, uh, and then I would photograph my granddad, who was quite elderly. Not too well at that time, and I'd photograph my uncle. Who is very physical, like strong, very masculine, strong arms. masculine yeah. man. Yeah, always running and working mm -hmm. out in the backyard. Very and American so I, man. Yeah, and I, you know, and I kind of, my dad took photographs all the time because he loved it, but he also photographed my mother because he was so in love with her. Ah, and wow. so it was nice to have a role model like that mm -hmm. that I could see. How one would interpret somebody differently. When I got older and I was starting to work, and people would give me a chance to work. Um, which was, sorry, which was your first one work 
my first work? Yeah, your first one job in photography for a magazine. Oh, you're crazy. For a magazine. Yeah. Oh, for a magazine. Um, I, I had a photograph of uh, 25 designers in New York, designers in New York City for Glamour magazine. Because there was this wonderful woman there, Nikki, uh, M I K I, it's Den Hall, and she was a very famous uh, editor there. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was from Europe, uh, from Austria. And she just had such great taste, and she was so calm. And I remember I, I had a photograph of 25 difficult people, you know? But I would just say a prayer, I'd go in and I'd just die from the swoop. I had no choice. And some pictures were really good because of that. So pictures were just like, okay. I mean, how many times can you walk out and see 25 good pictures? Yeah. Uh, Lisa Modell, who was my teacher, um, I, I knew about her from the photographer I got to be friends with the LRS. Uh, you know, <laughs> we know. Yeah. And, she was my dad. Yeah, and, yeah. She's in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> she would laugh at that. Yeah.